Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my channel. This is going to be the first entry in a long list of vlogs about the construction of a radio telescope. I'm sure most of not all of my audience has already encountered an antenna like these. A parabolic or a Yagi antenna somewhere on a rooftop. I'm sure you've seen these many many times but the average person unfortunately doesn't give a second thought to these antennas which is truly a shame as these devices are a pinnacle of modern technology. The most familiar electromagnetic wave to us is light. It is abundant and can be easily seen with an unaided eye. Visible light is a transverse wave with wavelengths ranging from 400 to 800 nanometers. In fact, your eyes too can be thought of as a directional antenna, much similar to the rough concept of the antennas mounted on rooftops, albeit on a different order of magnitude. Like visible light, radio waves are also an electromagnetic transverse wave, but with a much longer wavelength. While there is a conflict around the original discover of the electromagnetic wave, I personally believe that Heinrich Hertz was a discoverer of electromagnetic waves through his experiment, which I have humbly repeated. The experiment consists of a spark gap connected to two electrodes and a receiver consisting of two electrodes with a Nixie tube in between. Let us observe the apparatus in action. As can be seen, the Nixie tube receives the electromagnetic waves and illuminates. This is a continuation of Maxwell's equations and experiments which effectively proves that electromagnetic waves can propagate in space. Now that we are familiar with the main concepts of electromagnetic waves and the fact they can propagate through space, it is time to indulge in the concept of radio and subsequently radio astronomy. The first official radio telescope was constructed in 1904 by Nikola Tesla, which is known as the Spirit Radio. <sighs> Arguably, the circuit got its name because its creator, Nikola Tesla, believed he was receiving voices from the afterworld. They sound like eerie wisps and chirps and crackles. In reality, this is most likely VLF emissions from the Earth, also known as whistlers, which can be received even using a computer, audio jack, and a long wire. And yes, this project will be done on my channel, but all in due time. The spirit radio shown here operates on a very similar concept and is constructed by Mr. Fixtrix, linked to his instructables in the description. After the initial discovery of radio waves, there was a major period in the stagnation of radio astronomy up until the 1930s, because scientists were too busy working with practical applications and oscillators. During the 1930s, scientists in the Bell Laboratories noted the changes in hissing or distortion and other crackles during different times of the day. Here is a sample of what the various hisses sound like. Fast forward to 1964 when two scientists, Robert Wilson and Arno Penzias, were monitoring the sky with a radio telescope and they were stumped to find a hissing noise. The noise was isotropic and identical wherever they pointed the telescope. Initially, it was hypothesized that the noise was coming from pigeon that was in the telescope and perhaps creating some weird interference. But despite their most intense scrubbing efforts, it was futile, and no matter what other techniques they tried, like putting a net or even washing the whole thing with acetone, the noise was still there regardless. It was around this time, when they were about to give up, that Robert Wilson stumbled onto a 1948 theoretical paper by Ralph Alpher and Robert Herman, which predicted the existence of this very hiss as a remnant from the Big Bang at around 5 Kelvin, 
or at a frequency of around 230 gigahertz, which happened to be pretty close to the frequency they were monitoring of 235 gigahertz. The image shown here is the actual image produced by their telescope and their sky survey. This discovery kicked off the field of radio astronomy and awarded them a Nobel Prize in 1978. Soon, this kick-started a myriad of other projects. It is worth noting that this is by no means the only band that has searched in radio astronomy, and in fact, many more bands exist, such as the Hydrogen Flip Transition Band at 1420 MHz, and this band occurs when the spin of an electron in cold atomic hydrogen reverses every once in a hundred million years. But due to the abundance of hydrogen in the universe, it is quite a strong signal source. Major sources of this radiation include diffuse nebulas and other cold hydrogen sources. In addition, another popular band is the synchrotron band, which is also widely studied. It is prominent around 400 MHz and occurs when charged particles are radially accelerated by a field. Sources of this radiation include emission nebulae and black holes. At this point, you're probably wondering, how is this related to me, the average Joe? I'm probably a broke butt student with a limited budget, and there's no way I could afford fancy equipment like expensive radio telescopes. Fortunately, radio astronomy is not the case, and it can be surprisingly simple. Arguably more simple than conventional astronomy. All one needs is a fairly limited amount of equipment. A high-gain antenna, such as a parabolic dish from an old rooftop, or an old Yagi antenna, a low-noise amplifier, such as this one, possibly a filter, and a software-defined radio. In this series, I will be showing how to construct just such a device with a limited budget and that will get the job done, as well as give you an introduction to the truly amazing field of radio astronomy. This series will be conducted at varying iterations of complexity, so as to get the message across to a wide demographic audience. With this, I conclude this first entry in a long list of logs, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and enjoy.